Welcome to our October show. Pretty soon, hopefully, this view will be even more beautiful with the colors of fall. And speaking of fall, Alabaster has a lot of great things going on. We've got tons of fall festivals, the Buck Creek Festival. Nicole will tell you all about that. She'll also give you some great trick-or-treat safety tips this month. We meet a wonderful family, the Pickets, who own Pickett Construction. We also tell you how to not spook your buyers if you're trying to sell your house. That's some fun information that Tim Mitchell will give us this month. We bring back our Spotlight student, that, and you guys so much more on this episode that you don't want to miss. Bob Green was an optician who owned Alabaster Optical and Hearing Aid Service for 40 years. His kindness and passion to help others was his number one priority every day. He supported and blessed others with humility and in such a way as to not draw attention to himself. This is the legacy of Bob Green, selfless generosity. What would Bob do as a nonprofit organization whose mission is to continue the legacy of generosity of Bob Green through charitable giving to individuals, families, and organizations in local communities? If you have a need or would like to donate to this organization, please visit whatwouldbobdo.org. Our on-stage business of the month is Picket Construction. If you travel down 119, you can't help but notice their office right here. We're going to go inside and we're going to check it out. I was uh, raised in a family that did construction, and uh, so I've been around it all my life, and uh, just worked for other companies for several years, and then ended up starting my own business. We were born and raised here, uh, raised our kids here, have deep family roots in Alabaster, so that was the best place to um, start our business. Probably about eight or nine years ago um, when me and my sister decided to come in and help and do different jobs and so ever since then we've been um, working together. Being able to work with people that you trust at the end of the day you know that we're all going to take care of each other I think that's my favorite and most comforting thing. We do build some new custom homes uh, and then we do all types of remodeling from the bathrooms to room additions sunrooms, windows, siding, repairs, roofing, basically anything to do with a residential home, we can handle it. Uh, you have to listen really closely. Uh, get to know the person, get to know, look around their home, see what kind of uh, things or, or taste they already have. And then again, just really listen and uh, because a lot of people have dreams and you know, something new they want, so just really listening close and uh, getting to know them. Most of our projects are updates to homes that were built you know, 20, 30 years ago or updated back then and so they want to modernize it and make it look uh, more up to date. Um, and then some of the projects that I like um, as far as the before and after is the um, restorations where fires or flood have uh, you know, messed up their home and it looks so bad and then to have the customer um, see the home afterwards and you know they, they get their home restored so we can do that too. Kitchens are fun to make look good, you know, make them nice and add cabinetry and pantries and countertops where you're going from a formica top countertop to a granite or a quartz and it just really makes a kitchen pop, you know, makes it look good, makes the people very happy. Um, there's a lot of uh, people who come to us with their choices that they've seen online um, and so they bring us that and so we have to help them make that happen. Um, so I think that excites people when they see things on TV or online and they, they get their vision from that. Our office number in Alabaster is 205-620-1798 and the website is www.picketconstruct.com and we're also on Facebook. We've had a great time with the Pickett family today. Whether it's new construction or remodeling, they're your guys. So give them a call. The Yoga Loft, located above Brooklier Pharmacy, is Alabaster's premier yoga studio. A full-service yoga studio that offers spa-like amenities and flat-rate pricing. 
This is a judgment-free zone where people of all fitness levels will feel at home in a non-competitive environment. Encouraging, relaxing, laughing, and socializing is what we do best while strengthening our bodies and building community. Come visit the Yoga Loft today where there's always a welcome mat for you. Mention this video for a free class. You know why I'm so happy? Because I just tried Big Daddy Bomb Barbecue Sauce and it goes great on everything. Any meat, any meal is complete with Big Daddy Bomb Barbecue Sauce. You gotta have it in your cabinet. So if you're in Alabama and you need some Big Daddy Bomb Barbecue Sauce, stop by Buck Creek Pizza in Alabaster, Green Acres, Fried Chicken, or you can go by Piggly Wiggly or the Western Supermarket. I don't care where you stop, but stop and get you some. with Brian Copes today. He is the teacher at the Engineering Academy for Thompson High School and it is such an honor to be with you today. I am just so impressed with all the things that um, you guys have going on over at Thompson High School and all the projects that you do that really make a difference in people's lives and your Honduras trips and how, what, what else do you have going on besides the thing we're going to talk about today? Oh goodness, uh, we, we're just doing a, a variety of things. Um, We've been setting up sister schools in Honduras. I've, uh, I'm actually uh, working with uh, schools from across the United States to build uh, container classrooms where they'll take shipping containers, turn them into classrooms, and then we'll ship those to Honduras. And we're going to build them a vocational school using shipping containers as classrooms there. Um, we're uh, doing the full-size uh, electric car here. We do the electrothon. Just, we just do a variety of things. I try to find things that uh, just excite kids about learning. Yeah. and then get them involved. Well, you seem to be really good at it because they, they've done some really great projects. And um, you guys, this is a teacher. Teachers make a difference. And Mr. Copes is making a difference in the lives of these students and the lives of people all over the world, really. So we can't wait to hear about this project. So tell us what we've got behind us. Well, really what this is, this is a community project. Um, I, I find uh, w with the project, I try to find uh, a local expertise to come in and teach the kids. Uh, for example, we're standing here at uh, Leave It to Weaver's uh, interior shop and Scott Weaver has actually mentored these kids on building a, uh, putting in a custom interior. But we've had some students st spend almost the entire summer here working at, uh, at Weaver's designing and building the custom interior. Uh, before that, we were over at Performance Car Craft uh, with Scott Meinberg and his employees were teaching the students how to do the the paint and body work on the car. So the car has just turned out fantastic. Uh, we've got Miles Jackson, which is a retired uh, electrical engineer or master electrician. And uh, he's actually the mastermind behind the electronics of the car and showed the kids how to do the conversion. This is actually uh, titled as a 1969 Volkswagen Beetle. This is the old Volkswagen Bug kit car known as the Bradley GT2. So it, this has been an ongoing project for about two and a half years and we're about to have it wrapped up and do a, a nice unveil of it. Yeah, I know when I walked in, I felt like I needed to go watch Back to the Future so, when I got home. It's so cool looking. This is Miles Jackson. Miles, tell us your part on the car. Well, I had built the first 74 Volkswagen electric car in Alabama a few years ago with the idea of teaching students and one of their students saw it called me and simply all I did was monitor the, the electrical installation, the installation and the uh, schematics and make it, take it from paper to put it into the car and make it work as a cohesive unit. Wow, that's so great. That so just, you're a real treasure to have around here for these uh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it hadn't exploded yet. <laughs> that's great. Well, so have you enjoyed working with the students? Very much. I had no idea that, that uh, Mr. Cope had been involved with so many things that meant so much to so many people, and that's what inspired me to, to stay with him on this project and any other project I could help with. This is Scott Meinberg with Performance Car Craft, and so tell us your role on the car here. Well, we helped uh, Mr. Copes with the paint and body phase on the car, helping them uh, teach the kids how to do the proper filler work, hours and hours and hours of sanding, and uh, getting it ready for the paint, and then took it right through paint production. And how long has that taken? Oh, wow. Uh, well, the kids did most of the work, so I don't have the full amount of yeah. hours, but I'd estimate it well over a thousand hours. Wow. So, wow. So how's it been working with the students for you? Oh, fantastic. This is one of two projects we partner with Thompson High School on. Um, we've got a pickup truck down at the shop. The students come down to our, our shop every other week for about two hours in the evening, and they work hands-on 
They're rebuilding a 54 Studebaker pickup truck right now. So we've been working with Brian in the school for about three years now. This is Scott Weaver with Leave It to Weaver Upholstery. I'm so glad that you and your wife contacted us about this project. Tell us your part in the project. Uh, Brian Cope said, uh, contact me about possibly uh, helping them, uh, I guess, start on this uh, project on the interior of it. And uh, I told him uh, I wouldn't go help him. And he says, what? I said, no, I want the kids to do it. So that was my number one thing is I wanted the kids to be a part of it and learn to actually put their hands on it actually do the upholstery from the beginning. That's great. And how has that worked out? Oh, it's been awesome. Uh, they've learned a lot, I'm sure. Uh, they pretty much spent three months the whole summer with me. I think all we lack now is the seats, and uh, we'll be done with the interior side of it. What, what do you feel like you've learned by working on this project? We've learned a lot from body work to interior, <clears throat> doing sanding on the body work, uh, learning to fill in the low spots, checking for the low spots. There's a lot of stuff we've learned. Well, what about, do you feel like the things that you're learning are things that you can take with you? Oh, you yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Because oh, uh, Miles has taught us about all the electronics, about the car. So in the future, we can actually program in our own, own way. And wow. Well, now, would you recommend other students taking the engineering academy? Oh, yes, academy? absolutely. It's a great experience, and you learn a lot. And just working with other people and by other professionals, it it's, um, it's a very good experience. Okay guys, tell me your favorite thing on this car. The nice color red. Uh, truth be told, the seats, we worked really hard on it and I just love that I actually was a part of it to make these seats. I like the paint job, it looks really nice. And the, um, the headlights and the mirrors. Guys, it's been great talking to these students and these business owners and Mr. Copes, and I just love what they've done here with this car. And there's going to be an unveiling, so stay tuned to Alabaster Living, and we'll keep you up to date on when and where that's going to be. Hi, I'm Dr. William Rogers. I specialize in physical medicine and rehabilitation. My specialty is really geared towards uh, improving your function and, and, and getting you uh, stronger to get you back home. In rehabilitation medicine, uh, we focus more on musculoskeletal uh, problems, chronic pain issues, and uh, we work on um, uh, neurological and orthopedic conditions. I've been here now approximately uh, eight years or so, and uh, certainly this is one of the better facilities in the state. And uh, as, as far as overall, care and outcomes in rehabilitation and I hope to continue my career here. Hi, my name is Bethany McMeans and I'm a certified personal trainer here at Gym Time. And today I'd like to talk to you about core strength. The core is very important because it influences our everyday life from youth to the elderly. The core is made up of our abdominal muscles, our pelvis, our hips, our glutes, and our lower back. And when you strengthen those muscles in the core, it helps to stabilize your spine. And by stabilizing your spine, it helps you with improving your balance, your stability, your posture. And for my athletes out there, it also helps with strength and performance. So today, we would like to demonstrate for you how to do one of our favorite core exercises, which is the plank. And the plank is great because it works all of those core muscles, as well as it's able to be modified for beginners to advanced fitness levels. So we have Heath right here. He's a trainer here at Gym Time as well. He's gonna demonstrate the modified plank. So as you can see, to start the modified plank, he's gonna come onto his knees and his forearms. He's gonna have a straight line from his knees all the way to his shoulders and his shoulders are going to be stacked over his elbows. The next level would be the regular plank. He's going to come up onto his toes. He's still going to have that nice straight board and also you want to make sure that you contract those muscles in your abdominals as if you're about to get punched in the stomach. And then the final one is the extended plank where those elbows are going to come out past the shoulders. Still a nice straight board muscles in the abs are contracted and this is going to be for a real high fitness level. So if you need help with improving your core strength or any of your other goals, we do have personal trainers as well as small group training here at Gym Time and we would be happy to help you with that.
guys, so we're here with Tim Ham, and Tim is the director of the Alabaster Parks and Rec, right? That's correct. Big old job here. <laughs> so we're going to talk to him about the, is it the ninth annual Fall Fest? I think it is the ninth. I think it's the ninth, right? So that's a big deal. So tell us the Buck Creek Fall Fest, when, where, and how do we get here? Okay, Fall Fest is going to be Saturday, October 28th. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be right here on Buck Creek Trail. Um, it, we'll have vendors lined up all around here. We'll have a hayride that will bring patrons from Buck Creek Park down to the festival. Oh, perfect. And you can also use the Alabaster City Hall parking area to access the event as well. Perfect. So you talked about vendors, and I mean, this entire area of Buck Creek is just taken up with vendors and fun. So do you have any idea of what kind of vendors you're going to have? The vendors will vary. We have a lot of arts and crafts. Uh, people will bring out anything from your little knickknacks, uh, uh, wooden arts and crafts to, to nice pictures and, and paintings and things. So there's a large variety of those. You'll have people selling uh, candles. Um, you'll have all kinds of informational booths out here along with, uh, along with a lot of food, great food vendors that we'll have. So can, can vendors still sign up if anybody wanted to sell some stuff or, or get Yeah, if you, wanna, if you wanna sign up to be a vendor, you need to contact our office at 664-6840. Um, That's okay. the Parks and Recreation Office. Or you can go to alabasterparks.org and, um, and look at our information on our website. Okay, I need to talk about one of the most important parts to me and that's the food. Um, any idea? Can you give us like a sneak peek of some food vendors that might we'll be? Have, uh, we'll have a large variety of food vendors. We'll have uh, barbecue, we'll have pizza, okay. we'll have um, Kona Ice, Frio's Pops. Um, we're still taking those. We'll have, a, we'll have carnival type foods uh, that'll be here as well. So, so I expect there'll be plenty of food for, for every kind of taste that you or your family may have. I'm all about some caramel food. I'm excited <laughs> about that. Okay, now uh, stuff for the kiddos, for the little kids. Our favorite thing last year when we brought our girls was the trick or treat trail. They dressed in their bell dresses and brought their little pumpkins ready for some candy. Will we have that again? Yeah, the trick or treat trail is, is I think it's the biggest draw of the whole festival. Yeah. It's, uh, it's great. I got a great staff to do a great job of putting that together. I expect that to be even bigger and better this year. We're adding some things to it. So. Uh, so I want some of those to be a surprise, so I hope you get a chance to come out and enjoy that with your children. So I know a, another big draw for the kids is the, the actual kids area with all the rides, inflatables. Mm -hmm. What's going yeah, on Yeah, the, the kids area has grown each year. We've added carnival rides to that. We're going to have swings for the kids. We're going to have inflatables, uh, bouncy houses, uh, just all kinds of different activities for, for kids to come out and enjoy. Um, and, and also, to add on to that, while, while your kids are enjoying the inflatables and the rides, we'll have two blue and the Lucky Stiffs playing music during the event. A great awesome. band have been here every year, so, so looking, looking very forward to, to listening to them that day. Awesome. We are so excited you guys come out October 28th, Buck Creek. All right, guys, so tons of fun things going on this October in our city. Uh, probably every church in the area almost has got a fun uh, fall fest or fall festival trunk or treat going on. So check with them and see what's going on. But if you are a Halloween purist and you love trick or treating with the neighborhood kids, we're going to throw some safety tips at you just to make sure that we have a fun and safe October 31st. Um, some of them are kind of no brainers. Put the electronics down. I know that's hard for us now, but put them down. Make sure you're paying attention to your kids go in groups make sure everybody gets there together and leaves together when crossing the street make sure you're crossing at corners or really looking both ways and moms and dads or adults that are driving on halloween make sure we're paying super close attention because we want to keep those babies safe in their sweet little costumes speaking of costumes make sure they fit properly because one little step and trip can equal a boo-boo that will ruin halloween um, another great tip that I thought was so good is putting reflective strips on their costumes or on their candy bags to make sure that they're visible to cars. Um, you could also do some glow stick bracelets or necklaces. That would make it really fun, but still keeping them safe. We want to have a blast. We want to get a, our kids all sugared up and have a fantastic October. We want to do it in a safe way. I cannot wait to hear all about your fun Halloween stuff. See you later.
Moving? Renting? Building? Just need a place to store your stuff? Morningstar Storage can help. From a basic 5x5, about the size of your closet, to a 10x30 unit. We've also got you covered for climate control. Forget the headaches of multiple trips in your car. We've got a free truck you can use. And if you need access to your stuff at a moment's notice, no problem. Our 24-7 facilities give our customers added flexibility and our enhanced security features provide peace of mind. To reserve your unit, simply visit our website, give us a call, or stop by and say hi. Hey everybody, I'm Tim Mitchell, and this month is the House of Horrors. We're going to talk about scary items that can actually scare the buyers away from your house. The first thing you want to talk about is front entry, curb appeal. You want the grass cut, fresh pine straw, mulch, edged. You want a clear walkway. Avoid chipped or peeling paint around the front door or railings. No cobwebs, wasp nests, clean your light fixtures, and have a fresh plants or, or new welcome mat. Don't forget that overgrown landscaping shows the buyers that the house may not be cared for. Curb appeal alone can make the buyers drive on by and never even come inside. Now we're going to talk about what can scare your buyers away on the inside. Don't scare your buyers away with crazy paint colors. Stay neutral. Avoid extra decor, plants, and items that can be cluttered or tripped over. These items can also be a distraction. Don't forget to clean the ceiling fans, blinds, and windows. These are things that you may never notice, but the buyer will immediately. Clean switch plates, doorknobs, door frames, and anything the buyer will touch. Don't scare the buyers away with ghost doors. Those are those one or two doors in your house that seem to close all by themselves. We take care of that when we meet with you. Don't scare your buyers away with the dark. Lighting is critical. Replace all bulbs or light fixtures that don't work. Store away personal items. In bathrooms, don't scare your buyers with things in the toilet. Yes, keep them flushed, keep them clean, and keep them closed. No one wants to see your personal grooming items or wet towels in the bathroom. These are some of the projects and small items that can scare away the buyers, costing the seller, you, hundreds, perhaps thousands of dollars. We go over all these items. We take care of everything and go through these things to make sure the buyers feel welcome and get your home looking its best. This month's featured home is 165 Berkshire Manor Circle in Weatherly. This is an all brick, four bedroom, two bath home. You've got gorgeous hardwoods in the living room, tile and granite in the kitchen, and granite in the bathrooms. It's move-in ready with new paint and great exterior features such as its own private pool. So give me a call today, 205-305-8756 or timmitchellsales.com. We travel all around town to spotlight students that are making a difference in their community. And on this month's segment, we will highlight students from three neighboring schools. I'm Madeline Sermons, and this is September's Student Spotlight. First is a Thompson High School student who has persistently shown kindness towards others by simply holding the door for those who pass by. Uh, from the very beginning of school, like the very first day, Lindsay was outside the 200 hall uh, door where the glass block windows are and uh, she saw folks coming in, you know, from the parking lot and from getting off the bus, and she would open the door, uh, just to be nice, I guess, to open the door with, for people so they could get in more easily. Lindsay Martin is a senior at Thompson and wants her generosity to rub off on others. I appreciate them. I, ho I hope you get vote for homecoming queen. Yay, thank you. Yes, prevent bullying, prevent all the issues they got. Be nice of them. She wants to spread joy and set examples for others to follow in what she hopes will halt negative actions commonly seen in schools. Lindsay was nominated by art teacher Diane McRae for Thompson's Warrior Excellence Award. Students are nominated for the award by a teacher and then hand-selected by a committee of judges. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm really happy that she did because it just, uh, you know, she has continued this every day. We're now in like week six of school and she's still out there every single day. So this isn't somebody that was just doing something for recognition. 
I think she really does have a heart for doing something for somebody and not necessarily for anything but just a thank you. Lindsay continues to display compassion for everyone every day inside and outside of school. Lindsay is caring, loving, she loves everybody. Um, she is bright. Um, she brings laughter, love to everybody that she meets. With her constant enthusiasm and support, she continues to shine a light on her school. Next, we visited with an Evangel Classical Christian School senior who is heavily involved within her school. Bethany Farley is the key club president and organizes many charity events for her school and around the community. Um, Blood Drive, it was for, goodness, Life South, I believe. Um, I believe the goal was to get, a, I believe it was above 15 people and we got around 20. Um, so that was very good. She is also the school's secret mascot, Striker, who attends all the pep rallies and games. Um, how was I chosen for it? I actually um, found the ma uh, mascot costume online and I brought it up to the school board and I asked them if I could purchase it and so um, they agreed and then I brought it up to the athletics committee and they agreed. So I sold t-shirts until I raised the money to buy the costume, then I got the costume and started doing it. Bethany hopes that her peers will see her actions and reciprocate them. Um, I hope, you know, high school students just can see you can make a difference even though you are just one person. Um, you know, just really get involved in your community and show everyone the love of Christ. She will continue to organize community service opportunities throughout the rest of her school year and excel in her other activities such as being a senior class officer and a member of the robotics club. Lastly, we will take it to Kingwood Christian School to recognize a phenomenal group of student leaders. Recently, Kingwood elected their 2017-2018 student government officers. The group is divided by middle school and high school, but both have the same goal. Well, I think the biggest thing this year is just to make the experience for all of our fellow middle schoolers as enjoyable as possible and to lead them in every way that we possibly can this year. Students from both divisions want to continue to create opportunities such as socials and talent shows for their school. They also plan to work to become better citizens by incorporating charities within their planned events. The students hope to generate a fun environment for all students to be a part of. I think the impression I want to leave is definitely school spirit because that is what our school needs more than anything right now. Is because, I mean, like we have people come to the games but they sit on like side bleachers and they just talk to each other and like don't cheer much. I think that's, you know, the next step for the student body if I could choose like one thing to improve. Mm -hmm. I just want to make this year better, like, like make everybody remember this year as like the best year at Kingwood ever. That's all we have for September Spotlight Student. Tune in next month to see which students will be featured under the spotlight. Reporting for Alabaster Living, I'm Madeline Sermons. Have a great day. Thanks so much to our sponsors who made that show possible. Without them, Alabaster Living would not exist. And so go by, thank them, support them, and tell them you saw them right here on Alabaster Living. You guys, we are so excited about the fall season, about everything going on, and we hope to see you around town.